This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday, October 20th, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to the Florida Baptist Witness, after preaching at the Jacksonville Baptist Association annual meeting on September 30th at Fruit Cove Baptist Church, Southern Baptist Convention President Fred Luter gathered with JBA pastors and leaders from the Florida Baptist State Convention for an hour of prayer at the JBA headquarters. Preaching first from Philippians, Luter said that prayer needs to be personal, on purpose, and passionate. Luter urged those in attendance to pray for their families, their churches, and for the SBC. He asked for prayer for unity in the SBC, saying that Calvinism, Boy Scouts, and minister debates should not divide Southern Baptists, and that they need to be known for missions and discipleship. Second today, according to the Pew Research Center for the People and the Press, public trust in the government, already quite low, has edged even lower in a survey conducted just before the October 16th agreement to end the government shutdown and raise the debt ceiling. Just 19% say that they trust the government in Washington to do what is right, just about always or most of the time, or most of the time, down seven points since January. The current measure matches the level reached in August 2011, following the last battle over the debt ceiling. The share of the public saying they are angry at the federal government, which equaled an all-time high in late September at 26%, has ticked up to 30%. Another 55% say they are frustrated with the government. Just 12% say they are basically content with the federal government. Despite highly negative views of the federal government overall, the public has favorable views of many of its agencies and departments, which were closed by the shutdown. Majorities have favorable opinions of 12 of 13 agencies tested, with the IRS, the lone exception, at 44% favorable. Federal workers, hundreds of thousands of whom were furloughed during the shutdown, also are viewed positively. By about 2 to 1, 62% to 29%, more have a favorable than unfavorable opinion of federal government workers. The latest national survey by the Pew Research Center conducted October 9th through the 13th among 1,504 adults finds that just 23% have a favorable opinion of Congress, while 73% have an unfavorable view. Dissatisfaction with Congress also is seen in record anti-incumbent sentiment. Third today, according to the Christian Post, Davion Only, a 15-year-old orphan boy who recently pleaded in front of a Florida church for a family to adopt him, has now had about 10,000 families from the United States and abroad seeking to adopt him the adoption agency handling his case reported. The agency, Eckhart, has received about 5,000 requests by phone and 5,000 by email, and most of them have asked to adopt Davian. The agency's chief quality officer, Ron Zykowski, told ABC News. Zykowski said these inquiries, which have come from across the United States and other countries, including Canada, India, Mexico, Australia, Great Britain, and even Iran, have overwhelmed the agency. Zykowski added that Davian's plea invited so much traffic that the agency's website nearly crashed, prompting it to move to a bigger server. Thanks to his case, numerous inquiries are now willing to adopt other children as well. Fourth today, according to the Los Angeles Times, in his final days as pastor of First African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Rev. Cecil L. Chip Murray compiled, copied, and buried piles of records amassed over the 27 years he led the congregation. The time capsule, he believed, would preserve his legacy and document the church's role as a force for positive change in South Los Angeles. But in the nine years since he retired, Murray has watched his hard work crumble under the leadership of his successor, the Rev. John J. Hunter, and his wife. Allegations of financial mismanagement and sexual improprieties tarnished the church under the new minister. But it wasn't until Hunter was removed from the pulpit last year that the full scope of the church's troubles became clear. A $13.5 million reserve was depleted and debts totaled more than $500,000. 
and some of the nine rental properties acquired as part of Murray's efforts to serve thousands of low-income residents now sit in disrepair, some infested with termites and mold. The biggest blow to the congregation may be that the church no longer legally owns FAME Assistance Corporation, the nonprofits established by Murray to help bring jobs, housing, and corporate investment into riot-torn South Los Angeles. Murray said to see this even now just blows me away. How could you literally deprive ownership and put it under your care? For almost a year, Murray also declined to speak publicly about the ongoing battle. Instead, he tried to remain in the background, worried that his words, which carry much weight in the African-American community, might inflame the situation. He said, I made it a point to not interfere because I'm no longer there and I don't want to exacerbate the problem. Fifth today, according to the Alabama Baptist, when Sammy Campbell thinks about growth within African-American church plants in Alabama today, there are some churches that immediately stand out. Campbell, church planting strategist for Birmingham Baptist Association, said we have a couple churches who are doing very well in their growth. Those churches, True Vine Evangelical Outreach Ministries in Birmingham, led by Rev. Ralph Garth and founded in 2004, and Brewster Road Community Church in Birmingham as well, led by Eddie Gibson and founded in 2012, are two of the African-American church plants in the state, reaching populations of the unsaved and unchurched. A steady increase in attendance has been the overall trend among African-American churches planted prior to 2012. LifeWay Research learned from the first research project of its size and scope, as researchers described it, to measure characteristics distinctive to the African-American context. The average first-year Sunday attendance of 37 doubled by the fourth year among the 290 African-American church plants in the multi-denominational survey, aimed at identifying characteristics of healthy new congregations. Worship attendance, new commitments to Christ, community demographics, church culture, facility usage, promotion and outreach, and church sponsorship and funding were studied in the project. Six today, according to the Christian Post, Core Issues Trust, a London-based Christian charity supporting ex-gay issues, has brought legal action against Transport for London, requesting the transportation company remove bus ads by the homosexual activist group Stonewall. Mike Davidson, Core Issues Trust director, told the Christian Post in an interview on Friday that Transport for London agreed to host the Stonewall adverts but refused to host ours. He explained that the court had ruled against such controversial ads on buses, noting that they are intrusive and un unavoidable. Davidson explained, you can't switch them off when you're walking down the street. The court ruled against the trust, but allowed the group to appeal the decision, which Davidson announced they will do in December. In the interim, Stonewall has kept running the posters on London buses. Seven today, according to PR Newswire, despite the threats of the shutdown of the United States government, Pastor Cynthia Brazelton declares heaven is never shut down, furloughed, in default, or bankrupt. There is abundance for all during times of uncertainty, famine, and economic disarray. And God is standing by right now to answer your call. These and other inspirations will be shared as a gift to the world at the 24th Annual Virtuous Women's Conference, taking place October 23rd through the 26th, live from Victory Christian Ministries International in Suitland, Maryland, and by live stream broadcast online. Registration is free. What began in 1989 as a gathering of a few women around the kitchen table has grown into an annual event that serves thousands of women in English-speaking nations worldwide. Over 80,000 women to date have participated in virtuous women conferences in Maryland, Florida, Virginia, and the Bahamas. To register for the free conference, visit vcmi.org. Eighth today, according to the Associated Press, administration officials say about 476,000 health insurance applications have been filed through federal and state exchanges the most detailed measure yet of the problem-plagued rollout of President Barack Obama's signature legislation. 
However, the officials continue to refuse to say how many people have actually enrolled in the insurance markets. Without enrollment figures, it's unclear whether the program is on track to reach the 7 million people projected by the Congressional Budget Office to gain coverage during the six-month sign-up period. Obama's advisors say the president has been frustrated by the flawed rollout. During one of his daily health care briefings last week, he told advisors assembled in the Oval Office that the administration had to own up to the fact that there were no excuses for not having the website ready to operate as promised. The president is expected to address the problems on Monday during a health care event at the White House. Cabinet members and other top administration officials will also be traveling around the country in the coming weeks to encourage sign-ups in areas with the highest population of uninsured people. Nine today, according to Express News, an X-ray of a fetus with a bullet in its brain has revealed how gunmen are taking aim at pregnant women in the war-torn country. A volunteer surgeon who has recently returned from Syria described the hell beyond hell of the shooter's war game. David Knott, who spent five weeks in a Syrian hospital, described how more than half a dozen pregnant women were shot in just one day. On another day, two consecutive patients were expectant mothers. Both survived, but their unborn babies were dead on arrival. The women were all shot through the uterus, so that must have been where they were aiming for, he told the Times News. I can't even begin to tell you how awful it was. Mr. Knott has previously worked in war zones in Bosnia, Libya, Chad, Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. His visit to Syria was supported by charities, Syria Relief, Hand in Hand for Syria, and the Syrian British Medical Society. He added that usually civilians are caught in the crossfire, but this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. Tenth and finally today, according to Al Jazeera, Arab nations have appealed to Saudi Arabia to reverse its unprecedented decision to reject a seat on the United Nations Security Council. Arab UN ambassadors made the appeal on Saturday after an emergency meeting following Friday's surprise announcement by the kingdom to decline the seat in a display of anger over the failure of the international community to end the war in Syria. Saudi Arabia's leaders should maintain their membership in the Security Council and continue their brave role in defending our issues specifically at the rostrum of the Security Council, a statement released by the Arab states at the UN said. It added, however, that it was crucial for Saudi Arabia to represent the Arab and Muslim world on the Council at this important and historical stage, specifically for the Middle East region. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Psalm 51:12 says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3:16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.